reference librarians. And I'm really excited to have you and Chef here to give us our poetry workshop. Thank you so much. You I'm just here. I'm delighted and honored. This is wonderful. Excellent. Welcome everybody for coming out on a Tuesday night. How excellent of this, all right? August 20th. And we're gonna have some treats for you here today. So what you have in front of you is fun in the sun and not homework, okay? Because we've all gone past high school. This is not your normal poetry workshop, but what's normal, right? Everything's about fun. Life is about adventure. And please, I encourage you to laugh. If something moves you, cry, participate. I'm all about interaction. All right? Excellent. So our first thing of interaction is please pick up the piece of paper. Now, take it and fold one side. I'm just kidding. We're not making paper airplanes here. <laughs> OK. I will go ahead and introduce properly the cause and effect of words workshop. The main purpose of this educational and inspirational workshop is to look inside society's mind and question her politics, passions, and gender roles through the persuasive power of poetry. In this exciting and interactive workshop, I, will introduce various concepts and themes to explore the cause and effect of words through examples of poetry. Now, we will have an open discussion about poems and we'll get into that in just a few moments. It's very important when you hear a piece and you participate or I may have you possibly read something alone I may go to your table and ask you to read something. I won't ask your blood type. This is, you know, so no worries there. Okay? Uh, some things to think about when you're hearing the poems or possibly reading them is what political, passionate, and gender role themes speak to you. Why is that particular theme important to you? What are the key words that are highlighted for you when you hear something or possibly read something if I pass something around? Did you associate those particular words with a positive or a negative thought process or experience? And what are the connections between self-empowerment and the power of poetry. So we're going to cover all of that tonight, okay? And I actually did include one of my poems on this piece of paper that we'll look at later. First, what I'd like for you to do is to relax with me, welcome yourselves, okay? Make sure you fill out the piece of paper. And now, please. Close your eyes. I will read a piece of poetry. I want you to let yourself go. Become one with the words. Title. Two words. There are times when words are not enough. These are the times when silence is all encompassing. The richness of non sound becomes deafening, ringing out like Tibetan bells high upon the mountaintops mixing with sky and heaven, crying on to the earth with such joy and such pain, it is inconceivable to understand the great mystery of definition beyond that of ink or sound. There are times when one word is too much, 
These are the times when the weapon of self-destruction becomes the catalyst for wars that defile humanity's greatest moments to unite difference and practice compassion. There is one word that is the death shadow of its use, that is the birth of sacrifice. The word lives with want and is needed by all. It is the purest form beyond all tangible and containable things. This word has been the sponge for liquid salt of all nations. This word is the steel of protection against all evil, seen and unseen. It is the most sacred word, just one word. With this one word, the oceans of the world crash against the waves of your heart. It makes the generosity known even to the unknown. It is the invisible hand of the divine touching our lives through positive acts of healing beyond anything known to the physicians of the world. There is another word, just one word, that can bring chaos and destruction to all aspects of humankind. It will devour your self-esteem. It will bend your thoughts to a place of pitch, leaving you trembling feverishly with anger beyond that of sight or touch, where all are made blind by their actions to others. It is the animal that eats itself, always hungering for more, never sated, two different words. To name them is to give them power, split equally in the hearts of the host, which of these words do you know? Which of these words do you practice? Which of these words champion your deeds? The silence ringing out from the Tibetan bells has been broken. High upon the mountain tops, mixing sky and heaven, a cry from an eagle is heard. It is his struggle to survive. Can you hear him? Kindly open your eyes. Inhale deeply. Exhale. What you felt, whatever you felt, you own this. Whatever emotion is surging through you, you own this. Whatever you are thinking right now at this moment, you own this. This that I speak of, this is the cause and effect of words. This surging through you. 
like a freight train is the power of words. If anyone would like to share one emotion they felt, all they have to do is raise their hand and say an emotion. If you saw a color, if you want to share that, you can raise your hand and say, I saw a color, or I saw an image, or that reminded me of, of X, Y, and Z. Or you don't have to. You can save this. You can lock up this moment, and you can keep it. You can keep this. You can cherish it like the first butterfly expanding wings and kissing spring. Words. Pretty powerful stuff, huh? That pretty powerful stuff lives inside you. Now, you can also laugh. This is good. <laughs> I have a very strange accent that comes out from time to time, and you will probably notice it sneak through. It's a combination of French and Scandinavian, and somewhere there's a corkscrew, a wee bit of Irish. So I was told on my father's side. So if you hear something that's, hey, that's what it is. <laughs> OK. Um, so does anyone want to go ahead and say what kind of day they had? I can hear you. Yes, brother. I thought two words. Um, love and understanding. <sighs> Thank you. Thank you for opening the conversation. Say that one more time. Uh, love and understanding. Beautiful. Everyone, this is Pat. He thought of two words, love and understanding. Yes, ma'am. Oh, please say that again. Peace and Young lady, what is your name, madam? Cinder. Cinder, lovely name. She saw peace and tolerance. Yes, ma'am, Shelley. Yes, I, um, I guess I saw with the suburb rebellion inside of, um, of it, uh, the ones, uh, the ones saying the pain that's only because, I guess, I heard uh, this sort of stupid, I really, I heard stupid that I, that is one of my like, triggers, and I heard the, and the one that's talked about what could start wars and what could drive us to different things, I kind of heard God in that, I kind of heard uh, Jesus or God or the religious aspect of that. That's beautiful. May I, may I repeat that? Uh, yeah. Excellent. I, I heard God in the religious aspect of the part of it being the wars and what can start regions to repel against each other. And in my own personal triumph, uh, tribulations, I guess, I heard the word stupid. Excellent. Everyone, Shelley heard God and stupid. Not that God's stupid. No. <laughs> okay, now this is, this is where the teaching begins, okay? No matter what name you give your Lord, or God or Goddess, okay, we're all very tolerant here, okay? The divine is not stupid. <laughs> Thank you. Can I get an amen? One, two, three. Amen! <laughs> yes, ma'am. I just would like to comment that although, you know, the words tend to wash over, sometimes you just get the feeling of the passion of the person reading the poetry, and that emotion itself can be the strongest thing that comes out of a poem, I think, especially when it's being read loud. So I definitely was getting that vibe from just like a passion and the you know, strength of that. Phenomenal. And your name, madam? Jamie. Jamie. Say that one more time. It's beautiful. Oh, good heaven. <laughs> <laughs> we, I, I think that especially that when we're hearing poetry read aloud, especially if it's a person who maybe is the author of the poem, the poet, you hear the passion that comes through, and that's really what you take away from it. And that's what I took away was your passion for the subject, too. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. The passion, the passion that moves somebody from the spoken word. 
That's true. That's very true. Let's have a fun little exercise, and we're going we're gonna to tiptoe back into that. That was beautiful. Does anybody else have something that they want to add? This is great. Ah, rock on. Yes. The two words that I heard very um, clearly was love and fear. I saw a lot of fear in the... Um, and your name, madam? Jerry. Jerry. Beautiful. Love and fear. Love and fear. You know, it's very interesting. So very headbutting, so very different. And yet, for some strange reason, they are the cousins, the, the siblings, the mother and father of each other. Because, my God, if we all love, we'd have no fear, right? Okay? If we all fear, oh, we'd have no love. So, powerful. Thank you. Enlightenment. Yes, yes. Rose. I heard uh, obstacles like opposing forces and then courage in the face of those. So, okay. Can you say that again? That was amazing. Go ahead. Uh, obstacles and courage. Rose heard obstacles and courage. Fantastic. All of these answers, you own them. Each has its own beauty and strength and are personal to you. Poetry is like a painting, but with words. We can all hear the same poem. We can all read the same poem. But how we connect with the poem, how we become the ocean of these words, the ebb and flow of our emotions, of our state of mind, our life experiences, they seep in. We let them stir, and it blossoms like something magnificent. This is very good. This is very good. Um, I'm going to give you an option, okay? We are pretty much having a lovely discussion about very eclectic things that are very much a part of who I am. And the option is we can pick one poem, and the poem is Breath of Life. Now, this is one of my famous poems that is quite... Uh, a crowd raising cahoots. Okay, it's also something of a very wonderful mix of emotions and ideas because I read the poem in three ways. So I can read that for you and we can have a lot of fun on that circus ride and we can talk about each one of these ways that I read this and how it affects you. Or we can do that later and we can focus on this exercise that's on the handout, which is also a lot of fun in its own more subtle, subdued, educational way. So we're going to break up into two teams here because it's football season. I'm just kidding. <laughs> what I'm going to do is a show of hands. So Breath of Life read three ways, which is very entertaining. We're going to openly discuss that. That would, oh, okay. Uh, whoa, okay. <laughs> I, whoa, okay, wow, oh, wow. Oh, hey, whoa, hey, wow. <laughs> okay, I, uh, I think we almost have a split here. <laughs> a split hair. No, I actually cut them all right before, so I, you know, I even shaved. Okay, I'll tell you what, we'll do both. How's that sound? Sound good? Okay, we'll do both. First, we're going to take a break and we'll do the exercise. I'm going to tease you, then we'll come back to Breath of Life. Okay? So, the power of words. What I'm going to have you do is to take this time. I will actually very lightly time it for five minutes. You own this time. Take this time and please read to yourselves what I have included on the handout. The title 
is Hunger. It's from my chapbook, Lotus on Fire, which we do have for sale in the back room. That was shameless, forgive me. <laughs> We're, I'm a writer, you know, I mean, until I, that's when, you know, everybody gets paid. But, <laughs> but please take the time, read this, we'll discuss it, and I will see you in five minutes. Start now. Oh, yes, many. A chapbook is a more personalized, intimate collection of poems uh, that are selected by a poet in the celebration of freedom rather than a grandiose publisher dictating what works are sellable, and both are wonderful. I hope that's appropriate. Okay. So this is an excellent opportunity to connect with something that you read and how it makes you feel without sound. Taking that seedling of something that is presented like a piece of clay and you can work that any way that you want with your emotions and your thoughts and your ideologies and all the phenomenal things that make you unique individuals that should be celebrated each and every part of you. So, with this particular piece, can somebody per se, pop out one word of their own experience that they associated with this particular poem. One word can be anything. Yes, ma'am. Okay, everybody, and again, your name, madam. Cinder, I love that name. Cinder, fame or notoriety. This is what spoke to Cinder. Excellent, excellent. If I may ask, if it's appropriate, you could say, no, I'm not going to answer. <laughs> <laughs> or we can get a H-E double hockey stick. <laughs> uh, uh, what brought that word, fame or notoriety, either or, to you? What birthed that? And then the, the later I went back and saw the hand hunger thing, we hungered for that. It's super sweet. Um, she does canalize this, and I, I, I thought it was beautiful, too. Beautiful. Like, what do I know? But I did. I really liked it. Thank you. I, I like that, the way that you said, you know, we, we hunger for that. We all, we all hunger for that. That's fantastic. Thank you. Does anyone else want to share a word or a feeling or an image that... Yes, yes. 
Margaret. I felt passion and desire in my tumors, and I thought. Fantastic. Everyone, Margaret felt passion and desire. Excellent. Now, you know how this is going to roll. <laughs> you may or you may not share what, what sparked that passion or desire, what brought those words to a head? It almost felt like an intimate thing, like between um, a man and a woman, kind of about, or, you know, whatever, like, just, because it, to me, it spoke to, he sees her, or sees her, and from a distance, and kind of having a passion or desire. This is beautiful. Please, now this is very important, please state that one more time. Um, just an intimate thing I thought of, maybe from across the room or something, and, I've seen that passion or desire. Okay. Beautiful. You just segue. Yes. Whoosh, high five. Okay. So, and this is personal experience. Okay. So remember, it, it was intimate how he saw her. Okay. Very, very, very personal. This is great because it's Margaret's beautiful life experience because we all have beautiful life experience. That's what I think anyway. So this is key. Now, I am going to read this aloud because of what Margaret said. Please keep what she said in mind. And then if you can divide your thought, hear my words. And we will continue this because it's great. Okay. Hunger. A wordless invitation has been extended to you to step inside her world. Moonlight shines in her eyes, reflecting desire. She wants you to come closer, close enough to feel heat without flame, close enough to feel her eyes sear through you. Like an unleashed volcanic rush, dissolving all of your inhibitions. She quietly feeds off your anticipation and knows it is not enough. It is never enough. The soft curvature of her lips hold your name, waiting to be released in the deep folds of night within the art museum you slowly approach her photographed in black and white matted and framed she leans her beautiful length into the snow-kissed bricked urban landscapes and dreams of those who hunger for her. I'm going to roll back to what Margaret said because it's so important. We are all living DNA of poetry. We are all important individuals on this earth. We take our life experience. That is our foundation for who we will become as human beings. Now, she said it was intimate, along with other things, and he. Ah, isn't this interesting? Very interesting. Perhaps. This is about a man who is having this poetic experience about a woman. Perhaps it is a woman having an experience that is poetic about another woman. Everything is what it is. Everything is as it should be. Everything is personal. Bravo. Come on, everybody. Huh? That was awesome. Thank you. Now, let's open this up. 
who else wants to talk about anything about this poem? Anything. I did think it was an interesting point of view because I think it kind of switches back and forth from the observer of the painting to the thoughts of the painting or the poem itself. I thought it was an interesting way to play the point of view. Beautiful. You guys are cousins. <laughs> Wonderful. Very nice. Again, your name, madam? Jamie. Jamie. Lovely. Lovely. Wonderful. Very good. Very good. Anyone else? Ah, yes, madam, in the back. Colleen. So when I first read the poem myself, I saw two people first, kind of like across the room from each other, and then it segued into finding out that it was a painting or a picture. And then it was kind of cute because when I realized that, I kind of saw Mona Lisa in my head winking back at somebody. <laughs> Just as a cute little flash in my mind, but yeah. Phenomenal. Thank you. Thank you, Colleen. That's excellent. Fantastic. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Um, apparently you should brain because <laughs> I saw Mona Lisa. Not winking. Yeah. But I saw Mona Lisa. <laughs> and, and that it started as Mona Lisa, but then became more like Marilyn Monroe in a photograph. And I don't know why, but it's interesting that you said it could be a man looking at a painting or picture of a woman. But in my head, it was a woman seeing that painting or picture of a woman. Beautiful. Bravo. Yes, Shelley. Oh, 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 yes. Um, I kind of, I, I actually put this down first that I even saw like almost the uh, Statue of Liberty concept or the metaphor of calling it to the urban, you know, urban landscapes that, that all, all who hunger for her, I see that, but then I also put down because, uh, or of a lover in the city who uh, I've been, <laughs> that I've met for an affair. That I've met for an affair. Wow. Besides, I twisted kind of a little bit. But you know, that's 22 years to be in a partnership. But, but anyway, that's, that's what I have. Kind of got the metaphor of the Statue of Liberty because we all hunger for her and the urban concepts of it. And then, uh, meeting of a lover and seeing it. Shelly, that's great. See, these, these are all personal experiences. and. The thing is that, thank you, by the way, everybody, everybody give yourself a round of applause. We're going to go back to you. We got you. We got you. Uh, I'm going to make this short because I want to hear what you have to say because it's very important. What I want to say is, again, everything is personal. What you feel can be fact or fiction. It makes no difference because everything has substance to feed your soul. Yes. Um, so I got vampire. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it was the feeds off your anticipation, dissolving all your innovations, um, dream of those who hunger. You know, that's that's desire. That's Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have Statue of Liberty, Vampire Succubus. Kindly, your name, madam. Eileen. Eileen, lovely to meet you again. <laughs> but I mean, all these wonderful things. Do, do you see how? how fun and how playful and yet educational this is. We're all learning from each other. This is the growth of who you are, constantly wanting to learn more about yourself and others. It's an exchange of energy. This is poetry in motion. This is the cause and effect of words. This is being alive. Anybody else? Yes, ma'ams. <laughs> I have a, um, a little bit of the vampire thing that I thought was interesting. It's kind of about the gaze. And um, at the beginning, she seems to be gazing at the you of the poem. And then at the end, it turns out she is the one being gazed upon. Ooh, say that one more time. That was, go ahead. At the beginning, the the she of the poem seems to be gazing at the you of the poem, but at the end, it turns out she is the one being gazed upon. Cool. Nice. And your name, madam? Risa. Risa. Fantastic. Very nice. Well done. Well done. Yes, madam? 
Um, how I felt when I was reading it was this is the kind of emotion that you feel when you see someone and everything disappears. Yeah. And it's just passion and mm-hmm. and your your heart is pounding and your blood is flowing. And you and, and it's so sensuous and you, you feel so strongly. But then then you took me by surprise by making it a picture. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was kind of, you know, you had me so wrapped up into this thing, with the emotions of it, and then realizing that all of this emotion is coming from a photograph. Again, your name, madam. I'm Dawn. 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 Dusk and Dawn. Two of my favorite things. Crack of Dawn. (laughs) (laughs) That was great. No, that was great. And to see how we can take something and we can turn it on its head and we can play with our audience. We can go ahead and snare someone in and have them believe something that might be that, or it might be this. But what it is, is what you want it to be. Kind of like life, huh? (laughs) There's the Irish. There it is. (laughs) There you go. All right. Are you ready to hear Breath of Life? Okay. You're in for a treat. (laughs) I hope you do like it. Tonight, the selections are actually from Layers of Moments, and I will segue into Lotus on Fire, okay, and tell you a little bit about that. And I might pick some other readings from some other chapbooks as well. Possibly naked. Yes, that's what it is. (laughs) Or the master and the student. And that can be whatever you want it to be. All right. Here we go. There's a story behind Breath of Life. I wrote this poem and I was very at ease in a peaceful state of mind and I shared that with friends. I have a very beautiful, eclectic bunch of friends, and I love them all equally. And one of my friends said, wow, read that like a Southern preacher. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yes. (laughs) And I said, okay. (laughs) So I did. And then I also read it like a normal poet. And then another friend said, do you remember the movie Harry Met Sally? And I said, I sure do. Well, why don't you read it a little excited like that at the table scene? And I said, okay. (laughs) So now that I've hinted around about the three ways, I would like for you to also close your eyes and I will entertain you with the cause and effect of words to see how these affect you. Read in three ways. Version number one. Read like an average poet. Title, Breath of Life. Invisible warmth tingling over flesh, electric sensation of movement, such power without force, breathe for me. Let me feel your breath of life, feverish, flushed, no words between us, only sacred sounds. 
version number two. Like a southern preacher. Title, Breath of Life. Invisible warmth, a tingling over flesh, electric sensation of movement, a such a power without force, a breathe for me, a let me feel your breath of life, a favorish, a flushed, a no words between us, only sacred sounds, can I get a hallelujah? Hallelujah! Woo! All right. Pass the triple and put ice cream in it, because everybody loves ice cream. Or a bowl. We can make up our own words here. <laughs> Third version. Perhaps we should shut the door. <laughs> yes. <laughs> For those of you at home, when you see this at your local cable, this is also the time where you should perhaps take maybe your tiny tots and take them in the room for cookies <laughs> or turn down the volume and watch it at a later date. <laughs> TV o it or whatever you do. Okay. Version three, the erotic version of breath of life. Breath of life. Invisible warmth, tingling over flesh, electric sensation of movement, such power without force. Breathe for me. Let me feel your breath of life. Oh, feverish, flushed, no words between us, uh, uh, only sacred sounds. Uh. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> I'll be available all night. <laughs> so, I told you we'd have fun tonight. Let's talk about those three versions. Anything you want. How it moved you, how it entertained you. Maybe you didn't like it. Maybe you're like, oh my God, thank God this is a free event because oh my God. Oh, wait till I dial my sister. Oh my goodness gracious, this cat's in the cradle. Woohoo! Okay, so, floor's open. Talk to me, people. Woo! First reading, that's the first thing Okay. And I was just listening to the words, but uh, the flow of the words and what you were saying, and it was like, okay, this is to what it sounded like to me. And then the third version cinched it. <laughs> I guess that was question too. I was like, Thank I you wonder, know. while you were reading it, I was trying to figure out why your one friend would have asked you to read it like a preacher. Because I didn't see any keywords necessarily in there that would have made me go that direction. But I could definitely understand the third one line. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously, yeah. it, it did seem to lend itself to that. So it just, what about the second one? Do you think, I mean, what, what are the keywords in there that you think made it as Well, it wasn't a keyword. Uh, basically, it's because the person knows me. Okay, and so they just thought that would be funny for you. Right. Right. Let me give you a, li a little taste of the background there. We'll rope you in. <laughs> uh, very quickly to answer that, the reason why that was asked for me to read like this is um, there's times where I can be very shy and it's to get me out of my shell. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, actually, when I was younger, I did a lot of stand-up comedy. I was an actress, things of that nature. I travel around so I can... People tell me I'm humorous. I don't know, maybe I'm just like Bozo's love child, I'm not sure, but I like to have fun with life. So, nice, nice, thank you kindly, thank you kindly. Excellent. Now, yes, sir, Dan. I actually thought the, the, the preacher one made sense, um, given the, uh, just a couple, obviously, changes there. Um, the way I hear some preachers talk about the Holy Spirit and how it takes you and stuff like that, even, and somebody that doesn't believe in any of that stuff. 
Can you make that connection? That was great. Can you, if it's appropriate, can you say that one more time? Oh, okay. <laughs> I see it as more like a metaphor for the Holy Spirit instead. Nice. In the second version. Even if I don't believe in that, it's a... I started to have a couple of <laughs> no, it was great. It was great. See how this is speaking in different ways to different people, and everything is important. Everything is powerful. Everything has purpose. Everything is beautiful. Dan, thank you kindly. Thank you. Anybody else would like to? Yes? I just wondered what the irony of it, like reading it from the preacher's point of view, would be an ironic way to read it. But that makes sense, too. Because, you know, it's like it's performance art. It could be meant to be ironic. That's so. Yeah. That's a good point. That is true. That is true. I left the snakes around my neck at home because I was, hey, yeah, I'm just kidding. Tambourine, man. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so you're having a good time tonight. Yes. Somebody else want to add anything? Anything? Yes. Rose. Does it kind of add on to her interpretation and his as well if, if it was without giving too much into that whole side topic? I mean, if you think about religious ecstasy, and how close it borders uh, sensuality. Beautiful. You know what? Yeah, that exactly. that's very important. This was very good. May I? Until I heard her, I heard her say that, and you right. can put the two together. But it you know, it makes sense because a lot of times people get lost in I don't, I don't know revivals or you know when they yeah experiencing that what they feel is the Holy Spirit. Right. Indeed. It, phenomenal. It, excellent. Again. Religious ecstasy, how it par parallels sensuality. Because it's a release. Which, bravo. Bravo. Give yourself a round of applause right now. Come on. Do this. Everybody. All right. It's good to move things around when you get to be my age. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. No, that is, that's very true. No, that is very true. That's very true. Uh, to hit that topic... There are writings that have such a blanketing of area to cover. Okay, a lot of my writings do that, as you can tell. I can read something and, wow, this really sounds like this, and this really sounds like this. But maybe it was really that. That is purposely done because I have a very multiplex way of thinking. Myself as a person, when I see something, pretty much I see something in three realms. Normally, pretty much all the time, I see things as an author slash poet. I see things as a painter slash photographer. Okay? And I see things as an activist and a public speaker. So in any given thing, you know, I'm looking at something like, oh, that waterfall is so beautiful. And then it's like, the beauty of the waterfall flashing over, da 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 But really, this isn't about me today. This is about you. We all see things in different ways. Do you ever find you figure out exactly sure what perspective you've taken? Like, you know, you're... Oh, that's, that's, that's very interesting. Uh, again, your, ma your name, madam? Cinder. 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 I should know that by now. Everybody, if I don't remember Cinder's name, you can slap a flying fish at me. Okay? Cinder. Uh, basically, if I can paraphrase, I think what Cinder was asking was, is there ever a time where I kind of write something one way and look at it and go, oh, you know what? I see this a little different. Maybe I was really thinking about this and I didn't realize it. Like automatic writing almost kind of situation. Um, hmm. Usually, <laughs> well, normally when I, normally when I write something, I give myself over to the energy of the moment. Whatever comes to me, I welcome that energy of the moment. If I'm taking a walk in nature, something will inspire me. I do, I do have muses that inspire me, most definitely. Um, 
most definitely. One of my main muses uh, actually is my wife, Colleen, in the back. Mona Lisa. Uh, but yes, there, there, I, I, you know what? Maybe, maybe there are a few things that I've written about that, that I haven't you know, thought about at the time. I've had friends like Rose point something out like, you know, maybe you're writing about lobsters, but it's actually clowns from space. No, I'm just kidding. But you know, and, I, and we'll, we'll have deep conversations, philosophical conversations, and I'll say, you know what, that, that's kind of flavorful there. Yeah, I'll put that in the soup. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking because there's no lines in the book, really. I mean, it's a, you know, I mean, it, when it comes to you, you yes. yes. maybe not sure. That's, you know, that's true. It's very rare when I actually rewrite something. I may go ahead and say, okay, I was in a hurry, and let's make sure I utilize my spelling correctly. You know what I'm saying? But it's, it's very rare if I rewrite something. Normally, if it's right off the bat, it's... I mean, there are times where I will... There was a heat of poems in Lotus on Fire, which was written in a very short time period because it just kept coming and coming and coming and flowing, and the, the energy was, was like lava. All different types, rope, ah, ah, bohoy, ahoy. <laughs> I mean, all types, but yes. Um, why don't we look at something from Lotus on Fire? Does everybody want to look at something from Lotus on Fire? All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read a little bit from Lotus on Fire. If you want, <laughs> don't touch the record, Kim. <laughs> don't touch it. Don't touch it. You can kind of pass that around just a little bit. and. Um, Basically, in a nutshell, on the cover of Lotus on Fire is a little taste of, yes, a little taste of me being eclectic. This is actually some of my painting. I paint on canvas, and I also paint on humans. Nice, respectful humans <laughs> who are professionals in their field. So, sacred, and yes. So something of that. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of fun. And uh, again, everything is very sacred. But Lotus on Fire is a whole variety. You want to talk about putting a lot of different things in the soup. Wait till you taste this batch. <laughs> it has a whole kit and caboodle of ingredients. By the way, we have some pretty neat stuff for prizes today, okay? So it's fun. It's like you're at the circus and I'm the monkey, okay? Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and read some stuff from Lotus on Fire, and I'd love to get your reaction for that. And then, again, talk about, get back into that, that really good gut, that stomach. We're digesting this. We're having the same meal together, but there's different things that we like about the same meal. You know, maybe we're not so hot about lima beans. You know what I'm saying? But we like buttered corn. It's all good. Who doesn't like chocolate or some lovely type of fresh fruit? Okay. Aha. See? This is good. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> chocolate, chocolate going once. Chocolate going twice. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right. So we're going to go ahead and do a little mix here with Lotus on Fire. And what I'd like to do is to dedicate this poem to my grandmother, because the whole book is dedicated to her, Amelia F. Sorensen. So tonight, Nana, this is your poem. And she's alive. I just wanted to do that. OK? Title, Pure. Pure like sunshine and mountain stream, birthed from the mouth of God, jagged like too much caffeine, mixed with vats of Tesla's lightning, raw like unpredictable sandstorms and unfiltered emotions lacerating the mind, quiet like the moon and her secrets, 
caught like Diana's prey on the wild hunt, burned like the eternal clay pot shaped by divine love, blown back to the stars is our love, loved like no other, loved like no other, loved like no other. The curse is the blessing bitten by the teeth of knowledge, kissed by the lip of truth, in waking of pure desire. This is what we tell ourselves as the universe begins to spin a logic. We pretend to know. How about that soup? <laughs> Need a piece of bread? Want me to warm it up? <laughs> Coffee? I know no chocolate for dessert. I know that. A lot of images there, isn't there? A lot of images in that poem, pure. Does anybody have a favorite image? If so, <coughs> say what it is or keep it to yourself. James, thank you. Please say that again. Nikolai Tesla, Yes. Tesla. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Thank you kindly. Cinder. I got it. <laughs> the laceration kind of. The power of words. The power of words. Okay, James talked about the lightning image of Tesla. Cinder. Laceration made me sit up. That's the power of words. Desire. Statue of Liberty. Vampires. See where, sex. <laughs> Who doesn't like, well, anyway, okay. <laughs> Chocolate. <laughs> but do you see, do you see how absolutely woven everything is in the universe? Next, who else had a favorite image about pure? I wore deodorant today, it's okay. <laughs> Just for you. Yes. But it was of the mind, right? Yes. And so it didn't make me sit up, but that was probably the part that really like stayed in my mind because what I had as an image of those <coughs> words was a memory that, you know, maybe a memory that wounded you and so it is stuck it even if it's gone, it's healed there's still the star. And so that was the image I had from that particular part of the poem. Right. Wounding, something stuck. Lacerations of the mind. Excellent segue. Again, madam. <laughs> Renee. Renee. Renee, Cinder, I know. You don't like chocolate. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> but, but do you see? This is an image, an experience that stirred her, that stuck with her. Not everything is positive, and that's okay. Not everything is negative, and that's okay. Okay? This is the self-empowerment. This is the cultivation. This is the celebration, the cause and effect of words. Like dominoes, they fall. Are they falling? Maybe not. Eh, maybe they're just resting against one another. Right? Did somebody push them? Maybe. 
Maybe it was the breath of the divine. Ha! Maybe it was a vampire. Right? Okay. We're going to read something else. And I'm going to let you choose. We have several areas that you can choose from. It can be something erotic or something maybe political, perhaps, or something that is a very unique mix of a glimpse of me. So who wants what? I'm taking orders. We've had our soup. We're moving on to the main course. <laughs> Political. This is Wisconsin. Uh, Political. This is Wisconsin. Again, your name, madam. Bernie. Bernie. That is awesome. That is awesome, Bernie. That's great. Who wants political? Oh. No, no, I don't. I don't want political. I have to Google. Trust me, I don't want political. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to know more about you. Really. Like, I'm I'd like to know personally. I'd like to know if you're a gentleman. Are you a gentleman? Okay. You know what? I teased you. I teased you with my words. And you know what? I will have a question and answer session. I love you. <laughs> after, after this, right. I promise you, I'll open it up right. to the floor and I will answer you. Political, who, floor's open. We're taking bids. So we have one for political. Political, 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 political. All right, so let me see. Political, political, all right, political. I'm gonna see, okay. Uh huh. Okay. Political. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to open you up. Opening you up. And I'm taking you out. And I'm putting you on the table. And we're going to have a good mix. Okay? Here we go. Title Poetry is. Someone once asked me, what is poetry? I replied, poetry is all life and the lack thereof. It is every sound pleasing and appalling to the human ear. It is both the question and the answer. It is the mysterious language that crosses all borders of humanity. It is the bard's beautiful story of heretic and hero. It is both the profane and the sacred. It is the thing that one hungers for most, even when one is most satisfied. It is the quaking hour of midnight and the bright morning sun. It is the smile of God upon the fool and king both having knowledge of a different sort. It is the demon and the angel who greet each other without sword or fire in the greater scheme of the universe. It is the yearning of what you desire most upon your lips that is neither food nor drink it is the endless search for truth. It is the lover that longs for your embrace again and again and again. It is the eternal heartbeat that one takes for granted. It is the breath of sky melding with soil of earth. It is the secret passage into removal of all things to experience ultimate freedom. It is the mother's milk, the honey, the water of life that touches every spirit, both living and dead. It is the making of love and the making of war. It is the celebration of the noble soul, the creator, the one who is love. 
It is the last great self-expression of the voice. It is the stuff of dreams, fantasy, nightmares, and lore. It is the sage. We are the students. It is the crescendo of one who fearlessly steps beyond the threshold of conformity. The wind without words, the quest to be released by the blood flow of your spirit. Poetry is the fruit of your labor. Poetry is the fruit of your labor. Say it with me. Ready? Poetry is the fruit of your labor. How does that make you feel? Pretty empowering, isn't it? Taking ownership, associating what you want with that, any emotions that you birth from that. This is the cause and effect of words. Yeah. Now, we talk about the cause and effect of words. There is an empowerment. There is a stability that you create. You create the foundation. You lay the rules if you want them or not. You can make things as stable or as not as you want. All of you have the ability, the intellect, the drive, the sensation, the willingness to have the cause and effect of words motivate you as individuals, motivate your occupational duties, touch the lives of others, health and educational circumstances. The cause and effect of words are the makers of peace and war. The cause and effect of words are the celebration of equality for everything living on earth. We honor the cause and effect of words. The cause and effect of words. This is something extraordinarily unique to humans. The cause and effect of words. I can be very silly. Pat, I love that hat. I can be very philosophical or sensual or truthful or grateful. I can be very humble. I can be very subservient. I can be very, very vulnerable. Cause and effect of words. Think about this. Tonight, when you go home, share your story. It doesn't have to be about poetry. It doesn't have to rhyme. Share your words. Share your life experience. Affect someone. Enlighten someone. Move someone. Inspire someone. Help someone. Maybe, maybe that's yourself. The cause and effect of words. Two words. Remember we started out with that. Since we've talked about this, what are the words that you are feeling right now that you are 
thinking of, birthing, being affected by. If you want to go around the room, you can say, I'll start off, and you can say any word. I mean, you could say, Bugs Bunny, <laughs> peanut butter. You know, it doesn't matter what it is. You can say something or you can say pass. How about that? Because even passing is being interactive. That's right. I have a choice. I can choose not to make a choice. You're still choosing. <laughs> We're going to start with brother. What, what word just, you know what, what word comes to your mind right now? Um, art. Art. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pat. Margaret. I'll say love. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. Dawn. Life. life. Phenomenal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dawn. Feather. Feather. Oh, very nice. And your name again, madam? Risa. Risa. Feather. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Rose. It's actually two words because I don't know how to phrase it differently. Common thread. Common thread. Thank you, Rose. Nice. Dan. You said it, but it's not the same meaning as you just said it. Pass. Pass. <laughs> Eileen. Creatrix. Creatrix. Lovely. Nice. Could you explain that? Mm -hmm. I love it. Because I'm thinking dominatrix, and I know that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> See, are you not having fun tonight? <laughs> You're going to remember this night. <laughs> um, creator, male version, creatrix, female version, matrix. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. Blessed be. Beautiful. That is beautiful. James, thank you. Nanoseconds. 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 Very good. Very good. Nanoseconds. Shelly. Uh, I think it eases. Like, uh, like a which is two words, but that's okay. I've gotten a lot. Own it, Shelly. Own it. Own it. <laughs> An easiness, a fulfillment. Own it. Good. Excellent. Cinder. Um, transition. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. Thankful. 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 And blessed. And blessed. Beautiful. I'm the oldest one in here, and I'm still thankful. Oh. <laughs> and again, your name, madam? Bernie. Bernie. That was beautiful. Bernie, thank you. Thankful and blessed. Merci beaucoup. Up every Merci beaucoup, mon ami. Merci beaucoup. Absolutely. I think I'm older than you. <laughs> <laughs> Empowerment. And your name, madam? Jerry. Jerry. Empowerment. Good. Ownership. Excellent, Jerry. Excellent. Knowing others. Knowing others. Knowing others. Knowing others. Knowing others. Not having fear. Knowing others. Very good. And kindly your name, madam, again. Ruth. Ruth. I love Ruth. I love the book of Ruth. It's one of my favorites in the Bible. Very nice. Very nice. And Jamie. Jamie. Uninhibited. Nice. Very nice, Jamie. Thank you kindly. Renee. Renee. Peace. Renee. Peace. Peace. Very nice. Peace. Peace. Look at you. You guys are phenomenal. You're <laughs> awesome. Beautiful spirits and souls all coming together like this lovely batch of soup that we made tonight. Some fantastic celebratory soup. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna finally open that up for questions, because I know Shelly's burning. <laughs> I got the so, <laughs> we're gonna open the floor up, and uh, this will be a lot of fun. So this is, this is your, your time with me, because my clone just left. <laughs> My mother wanted twins, by the way. <laughs> All right, Shelly. Well, I guess, do you feel, I know you're very spiritual, and you, um, and in your outlook, um, the way the muses and the, the, the certain things that you, you know, direct your, your kids by, 
do you think it has to do with your birthright? I guess uh, I know that I'm the way I am, even though I'm not as in the Soviet as it seems. Uh, I can look at a Gemini thing of it, and, sure. and just almost fits me to T. You know, do you? I, I know that it's the second. But when is your birthday? Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Spill it, Shelly. Right. You know. That's what I know. I just, I think that. So, all right. Okay. Uh, Shelly wants to know if I'm a Gemini. I'm not, and that's okay because you know, everybody's cool. In my book. I'm a Taurus, yeah. and not because I'm full of bull <laughs> <laughs> or bull fecal <laughs> uh, manure, but no, I am a Taurus. Uh, and yes, you're right. I am very spiritual, and I will. Leave that open to somebody else who would want to ask me anything else. Yes, Cinder. In hunger, who was she in the dream? I mean, when you wrote it. Oh. Her, who was she to you? Who was she to me? Okay. <laughs> now it's time for cookies. <laughs> what a wonderful night, you guys, everybody. <laughs> this is being edited, right? <laughs> No, I'm kidding. You can let it flow like the river. I'm good. Uh, so Cinder asked, who was she to me? As you know, as I've stated, I have many muses. And that was a... Mm, how do I answer that question and have it be intellectually satisfying for you? That was a, a, a kind of a compilation, a, a, a dose of this, a dose of that, per se. Uh, it was inspired by numerous things. Um, and it was by inspiration of a certain place and circumstance, actually here in Janesville, to be quite honest, uh, that was inspired by a photo shoot that I did. So here in Janesville. And, um, early November of 2012, but I was thinking of several people at the time of that poem that I wrote, um, and, and maybe she wasn't a she, so there you go. <laughs> no, she, no, I'm, I'm always a very open, honest person. Uh, she was a she. She was a compilation of a couple of different women who I honor and love and celebrate each in their own special, sacred way. Is that, is that appropriate for you? Is that okay? Yeah. Yes. Um, I was going to say, was, she, was it uh, sexually based, but oh. wow. was anything? I mean, that could be, you know, if you're catching something. Take your children out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't we put out that questionnaire that we can't ask him? No, I'm just kidding. No, I know, I know. Okay. I am. I'm open and honest. To answer what Cinder was asking me, for those of you who didn't hear, was, was that sexually based? I can honestly state that the poem is very, obviously, you've read, you know, you've read the poem, okay? Uh, but because of, there were several images in that poem, to me it was, it, it was, okay. <laughs> no, no, I'm an, I'm an honest person. I'm, again, I think we, I hit on this a little bit. When I look at something, almost 90% of the time I'm in three realms. I'm in the realm of author, poet. I'm in the realm of, you know, photographer, artist. I'm in the realm of public speaker and activist. So, on this photo shoot, I was in the realm of kind of artist and photographer and, and, and poet, philosopher. I have a degree in philosophy from UW Parkside. So sometimes, again, reading something, I will take something that I'm very passionate about and an intimate subject matter, and it can be very sensual and passionate and you know, all this phenomenal, you know, put your own words there. But it may not be sexual, okay? Um, you can have something that's very intimate and sensual and not be sexual. Does that make sense? 
It, well, it's not, it wasn't that. <laughs> so, yes. This paragraph reminded me of a movie that was set in San Francisco, and it is at least 34 years old. I think it was L. Um, Hitchcock, and I, I didn't say anything because I couldn't remember the actors, the actresses. And, but the woman is mentally ill, and she's being followed by someone like this. She's hired by her husband. Ooh. She's hired by her husband. And she goes to the museum, and she sees this portrait. And then she goes again and sees the portrait. That's phenomenal. Did she have a braid, a long braid? Well, you know, you know it's, it's interesting that you make mention of that. There's a poem, actually, in my chapbook, Nekia, that talks about something kind of similar but going back to that, that photo, it was a photo shoot. It did take place in downtown Janesville. It was chilly. And there were two models. And so as they were in the middle of this photo shoot, which is actually for our LGBTQ greeting cards, equality expressions, uh, they, they were leaning themselves not just into the, the motion or the moment, for my lens, but into life, into life. You know, when you, when you lean into life, beautiful things happen. Beautiful things happen. So, did I get into other things? No, but this is a deep movie. Appreciative, I was appreciative. This is a deep movie, and I wish I could remember. Vertigo. Vertigo. Was it Vertigo? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Vertigo. Vertigo. Yeah. Vertigo. Vertigo. Yeah. Vertigo. Yeah. Vertigo. Yes. Jimmy Stewart. Thank you. Now, while we're doing a Q&A session about myself, by the way, lovely, lovely. Kiss is on you. Kiss is on you. If you're hungry, lasagna on you. Yes. Um, I have a question. Why go... Why did you choose to go into poetry versus, say, becoming an author of stories or... or I mean, I, from what I read, you like, you love Shakespeare? I do. So... Instead of writing plays or writing novels or why poetry? This is a lovely question, and I'm going to read something especially that I'm going to de dedicate to you. Okay. I I also write screenplays, short stories, and poetry. I've written speeches for LGBTQ events such as Capital Pride, a Rockford Pride in 2012 and 2013, and. Yes, you have a question. No, you do not. Okay, <laughs> okay. I'm going to read you something, and this is something that's very, very unique to Pickle Barrel Press. It's the publishing press that my wife Colleen and I own. Okay, you're, you're gonna love this, Dawn. You're gonna love this, trust me on this. And this kind of helps answer that question a little bit. What I'm about to read is called a storm. A storm is unique to myself and Pickle Barrel Press. So I have copyright on it. It's a combination of a poem and a story. Oh, you're going to love this. Okay. Keep your hat on. <laughs> For Dawn. Title. Hold. I want to hold on to this moment. I want to hold on to every piece of Michelangelo's sky above us, each piece of embryonic soil below us. I want to hold on to each season in all of their magnificence of birth and rebirth, giving us the vital nutrients of who we will become. I want to hold on to each drop of rain splashed, mud clumped, wind burned, sleet slickened, snow covered, sand gritted, sun drenched, ice bitten, smooth skinned, and rough lipped moment with blood and bone and breath seeping in between the cracks 
of our being. I want to hold on to the imprint of you saying my name with your arms around me to always feel that emotion running down my torso like this heavy, brilliantly chilled brain soaking into every follicle of my body. No one else speaks my name like you do, breathes it like you do, mumbles it like you do, looks at me and through me like you do. You melt me and set me on fire, blowing my ashes into the face of God to be blessed and forgiven simultaneously. I want to find myself entangled in your limbs, stretching outward and inward like a convex and concave satin spider web as we experience all known emotions together, riding the highs and lows, like rough-edged, soft-spoken Western cowboys, braving themselves against the world to be open to each other. I want to hold on to this epic, transcendent timeline, this that enfolds around us, like dancing with the bittersweet, ultra-romantic, highly enlightened, and mysteriously enigmatic definitions of old souls, new souls, souls of past lives, souls of kindred spirits, and soulmates. I want to hold on to these sporadic shots of adrenaline that bring me to my knees in a combination of resolve and resurrection. I want to hold on to this divine devotion that washes over me, becoming a baptism of love. I want to hold on to this moment flat-backed and Charlie Browned looking up at you as you unexpectedly took the football from me because I secretly wanted you to. Wow, that took a little at the end there. <laughs> <laughs> it is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's called hold. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it's in Lotus on Fire. And this, this person here is my better half. Her name is Colleen. Yes. If you want to do the I want to go ahead and uh, say something very special about what Eileen has there. You all have something very special, which is awesome. This, okay, CD is such a blessing to me. A very good friend of mine, Dakota Windancer, and a very good friend of mine, James P. Rogers. Roberts, sorry, there's the Irish rolling in there tonight. James P. Roberts is also on the CD with me. Okay, Dakota Windancer is a phenomenal Native American flutist and also Celtic flutist, and he has many different talents. We did that CD live in the studio. That is not some backtrack. He was live with his instruments. It was wonderful. It's a nature CD. James P. Roberts did something amazing. He did Tuvian throat singing. Okay, Tuvian throat singing is very, very ancient Russian throat singing that mimics nature sounds. Okay, he was utilizing this opportunity to showcase his talent while he was singing Tuvian throat singing. I was translating in English. So it's wonderful. 
and the piece is I Call the Wind. So there's a lot of wonderful nature poetry that is very spiritual and sensual and blessed. So give yourself a roaring, roaring, roaring round of applause and come back and say hello to Colleen because she wants to say hi to everybody too. And if you want to know more about me, she can answer a lot of questions. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. You're wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. You're welcome.